Hi, I'm Lauren from LSP Actions and I'm going to show you how you can create this warm storytelling narrative edit in Photoshop using the LSP Light Chronicles Photoshop Action Suite. In this video we're going to go over every section of the action, how to add them all quickly and easily using brushes, sliders and some tricks with the Divine Blur to show you how to select hair and fur um, easily in Photoshop. We're going to look at the whimsical wash section and also in the enhancements how to add sunbeams, a texture overlay as well. This video does not cover how to get the actions into Photoshop or how to view them on button mode um, or any of the technicalities like that. You're going to want to watch video one which is the overview if you're unsure um, of any of those things. So without further ado, let's get started. This video is around 18 minutes long. You can always skip to the sections you want or you can watch it in its entirety. It's up to you. So let's dive in with the edit. So I'm going to start by creating a new merge layer here to clone, heal and fix. I'm going to zoom in. There's some straw that's fallen off bunny here. So I'm going to grab up on the spot healing brush tool. I'm going to click and hold my mouse till this menu arrives and get the patch tool. I'm going to use the patch tool to draw a selection around this unwanted object, leaving a little border around the edge. And then I'm going to click the select and fix uh, bonus action just to fix that. I'm going to do the same for a couple of other areas here. So I'm just cleaning up um, a little bit any distractions. You could also use this to clean up, for example, I quickly threw this, um, this voil up to diffuse the light which looked really harsh coming through um, but it doesn't look very good. I'm going to be blurring the background anyway so I'm not too worried about um, all of the creases but I'm getting rid of some of the big creases here. By patching you could clone, you can use that select and fix if you wanted to. So I'm going to come here to set the scene. If you're unsure of how to use these actions, please do watch the overview where I talk you through how to install the actions um, and a kind of an overview of what each section does, as well as how to get the actions viewing like this on the one click coloured button mode. So I've just played play them all. You can play each one separately if you want to, to set these layers above your background that you can tweak and change, but I've clicked play them all. You will notice here they are invisible there's no eye next to them so you can click this little box to turn this action on or off and see whether you like the effect. You want to set a nice balanced base for your edit so I'm going to lift the shadows a touch, perhaps add a contrast hit, I'm going to turn that one down a little, I'll bring back some highlights, a slight matte contrast, warm it up and perhaps take the warmth down again using this yellows down layer and I'm going to go ahead and close that Section 2, Chapter 2, Sculpt the Light Brushes. I'm going to go ahead and click Play Them All again. And you'll see it has set all the brush layers out with black layer masks next to them. They're all visible, the eyes are on, but you can't see the effect because the layer mask has turned black. So you need to make sure you're on a white brush. Your brush icon is here. Make sure it's white, set to normal mode, 100% opacity, 25% flow, and you can get painting. So I'm going to use the draw attention brush layer first. This is what it defaults on, just to brighten up the face here. We want to select where we want to draw the attention into on our image. I've brightened up the face. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger because I want the light streaming in here into our subject. Now the opposite to draw attention is to darken and blur down, so I'm going to darken this background a little, anywhere I don't really want to draw attention to. Sharp brush, I'm adding that to our attention layer. Darken more, I don't think I need to darken this image anymore. Soft brush, I'm going to use that to slightly blur, although I will be using the divine blur action for this one, um, so I don't need to worry about softening too much. Contrast brush, again I'm going to add this over our subjects. Softly brighten brush, Let's just brighten up softly there. 
and I don't think we need to use a brighten more or bringing the highlights down so I'm going to leave those as they are and close the group. Now I'm going to add a divine blur. I'm going to play divine blur big action. This action takes a, an awful lot of steps um, to separate your subjects from the background so you can add a blur behind your subjects without blurring your subject. Right now Photoshop um, has used the subject selection to try and remove your subjects. You may find like here there's some little bits left over but don't worry too much about those. The main priority is that the main bulk of your subjects has magically disappeared, albeit a bit shabby. So the Gaussian blur option will appear here. It's automatically set to 25 um, blur radius but you can take this down a little or up a little depending on the blur. I'd always recommend taking it down a little to begin with um, if you're not sure. Always go a bit less because you can always blur more if you want to. It's very hard to remove a blur once you've added it so always go um, a little bit less. Now Photoshop is um, setting up the layers for your blur and they will all be in a drop down group as you can see here. Instructions will pop up um, should you need to remind yourself how to use this set. So you'll notice up here your subject is selected. This is the um, selection Photoshop made, so in a minute we're going to go back and edit that. But right now, I'm going to come down here to the soft blur background. Make sure you click on the black layer mask box. Select a nice big brush and start painting this blur on behind your subjects and anywhere else you want to blur. And you will notice it's blurring, but it is not blurring your subject. It's painting it behind your subject because they are cut out here on top. I'm going to use foreground blur just to blur the foreground a little too. You have extra painterly blur which is beautiful for this type of um, sentimental edit here. So I'm going to add some of that into the background. Now you will notice that the selection, although it's quite good, isn't perfect. We have bits of the face missing here. So come up here to the Your Subject layer and make sure you click on the layer mask here. Grab a white brush. I'm going to zoom out a little bit there so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click the layer mask here. Not the layer, the mask of your subject. This is the black box with the white cut out in. And you will see the selection. You can notice here it's missed a large chunk of the face. Um, it's not ideal. So what I'm going to do, you can turn the, blur, um, the whole group here on or off to see the areas of selection that have been mixed, missed. And I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to grab a little brush on white, a little bit hard, and I'm just going to start painting these areas back in. You can switch back to black to paint them away again. It's important that you do this as accurately as possible. Just painting that back in there. using black to paint this otherwise it's adding some sharpness in and the same with bunny a lot of the fur hasn't been picked up I'm going to show you how you can refine your selection um, to select the fur so what you need to do is make sure you're on this mask control and click the mask so your marching ant selection appears click the layer come up here to select hold down shift, it's very important you hold down shift and hit select and mask. If you don't hold down shift you're going to open up um, the newer version of select and mask which isn't so good for hair removal so we want to um, open up the older version so hold down shift on your keyboard and hit select and mask and you will get this refine edge window come up. Make sure you're on the refine edge brush here make that a little bit larger and what I'm going to do is stroke this over any areas where I want to pick the hair up. You will notice now we have some nice hair selection coming in. So it's picking up all these fine hairs, whiskers, you can see they've been selected. I'm not quite sure why Photoshop hides this and the need to select a shift when you play it but it does. I'm just going to use that around this area here just to um, hone in that hair selection and then hit OK. So you notice now our selection has changed, the marching ants have changed. So you need to come here, right click, delete the layer mask, back down here 
um, to the little box with the circle in and add a new layer mask. That's a hack of how you can select hair and things with the blur being behind it. So now we can see before and after. You can go in and further um, enhance the hair, refine selection, do whatever you like um, with this action. So I'm coming back here to the blur layers now. Under your subject we have colour the blur, matte, lighten, darken and contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out again and grab a big white brush and I'm on the colour the blur action here. So I'm just going to play a little, paint a little bit of this over the window just to calm that window light down. You can double click this one and you can change the colour to anything you like. So let's make that a little bit brighter. I'm going to perhaps darken the blur a touch here around the edge and maybe just along here too. And perhaps add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to make the brush bigger and just add some contrast over the blur. I'm going to turn the opacity of that one up and down until I'm happy with the effect. And once you're happy with the blur, you can go ahead and close that group by clicking the little arrow and turn that on or off to see the before and after effect of the blur. So step four is the creamy uh, dreamy skin and details brushes so you can click here to play them all or you can play each one individually as many times as you like I'm going to go ahead and click play them all because I'd like to set all of these brushes up above my background layer so I can grab a white brush and really hone in with that um, sentimental dreamy OTT edit that we're going for for this image so make sure your brush is on 100% opacity 20%, 25% flow. So I'm clicking on painterly silk skin. I'm just going to zoom in a little. Make my brush a little smaller and I'm going to start painting on this painterly silk skin effect. Which is really, really beautiful for this type of edit. So you'll notice how dreamy and soft the skin is now. I'll pop a little bit over the hair too. I'm going to switch to a black brush and I'm going to paint this off. Remember black means hide and white means show. Now we're on to the sharp details, make this a little bit larger and I'm going to sharpen up the lashes anywhere in focus that I want to draw the attention to in this image. It goes for Bunny too, so I'm going to sharpen her up. Bright eyes, um, pop a little bit of that on Bunny and let's zoom out a touch. Now I'm on a darken brush I may use this to darken the wall a little. And perhaps this little area here too. Brighten the face a touch more. Some 3D contrast, yep, I think I'll add that in. And some delectable sharpen here just around these areas. You also have calm the skin tone. If any areas of skin tone look a bit glowy, you can play that one over. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Dreamy Skin and Details group and turn that on or off so we see before and after. Now chapter 5 is the Whimsical Washes. This is where you add that storytelling finish. You can go ahead and play as many as you want to of these. You can mix them and match them. You can play them all. This will flatten your image first but it will take a snapshot here up in your history panel. Snapshots are up here. These actions have actually been taking them the whole time. So you can revisit the snapshot and it will show you your layers at that moment in time. So I'm going to go ahead and play them all for this image so I can show you what they all do. So I'm going to click play them all. This will flatten the image first but don't worry it's going to take a snapshot so hit continue. If you want to save at this point please hit stop although you can go back to the snapshot and save from there. So I'm going to hit continue and this is going to play each of these whimsical washes. You can see it's working really hard up here. It's going to play each one um, and it's going to turn each action off so you don't see them. This way you can turn them on or off and mix and match to create your own unique wash over your image. So this does take a little while to play out but you'll notice they are all appearing above your background layer. 
Each one of these is customizable if you want to. You'll probably find you don't need to. Um, all you'll need to do is turn them on or off, slide the opacity, maybe paint a little bit if you want to, um, if you really want to alter them. Um, but you can open the folders if needed. So once they have all played out, you will notice them all sitting um, invisible above your background layer. You can turn them on or off to see the effect. So you can simply go through them um, and decide which finish you want. Each one offers a beautiful um, and unique finish to your image. You could even save several different versions if you wanted to. I think I'm going to go for extra warm evening, but I'm going to grab a blank brush and just take this off the subject area. Contrastly, I may turn that down. I want this one to be a really dark and warm edit. Comfort brings a little bit of light back in, so I'm going to turn that up a touch. I may have burnished glow. These will come out differently every time, which is wonderful and they adapt to suit your image. Perhaps brown sugar again, I'll take that off the subject a little touch. So what you can do now, you have all these that you haven't really gone through, you haven't used, so you can come up to the toolkit section and hit the clean up unused layers and that will just get rid of those for you. So now we're on to the enhancement section, I'm going to add sunbeams. You can also add an extra blur, darken the edges, you can paint some noise over the banding. You see here there's some banding, but I'm going to use a texture to take care of that. So hit Ctrl or Command T, this will open up your free transform option, and you can move um, these sunbeams wherever you want them to be. So let's pop them here. I hit enter. On the black um, on the white layer mask, sorry, with a black brush, you can paint this off your subject. I'm going to use the darken edges action here to do exactly what it says it does, darken the edges down. And with a white brush, I think, um, a black brush, I'm going to paint that off this area because it's already a little bit dark. Now I'm going to um, add a texture by clicking the action here. It's really important that you have um, unzipped or extracted your textures first. If you go in and open, say, the zip file like this, Photoshop won't be able to understand that. You need to have unzipped and saved your texture files somewhere. So let's go for Illustrate and hit Place. The texture will turn up um, over your image as a solid layer. Um, so just hit Enter and then it will turn um, into the blend mode of soft light, which allows you to move the texture around and you can see through it. Hit Enter again. A large black brush will be selected for you. You can make this even bigger and you can brush the texture off any areas you don't want it to show, especially the skin. If you own um, any of the full LSP texture packs, you will notice um, that there are way more actions included with that one um, when it comes to adding your textures in Photoshop, so you can go ahead and use that. But for this kind of image, you can just literally take the texture right off. So that's before and after adding the texture on, which really draws the viewer in. You can use any of the final art layers here. Um, strong contrast, painterly contrast, boost matte bumper. Perhaps we can bump the matte up a little bit on this image, you see there? And we can just slide that to strengthen it if we want to. We also have brighten, darken, rescue the darks, um, tone down the highlights, calm the yellows, etc. But I don't think we need any of those for this image. So let's take a snapshot and see where we started and where we finished and that's using the LSP Light Chronicles Photoshop Action Suite which is part of the Sentimental Storyteller Collection available at www.lsp-actions.com